Welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. For this video, we're going to look at thick skin. Uh, this is a histological section of thick skin, and you can see the major layers of skin in this image. This layer is the epidermis, starting up here at the surface and going down to the bottom of this deep purple region. All of this is epidermis. Underneath the epidermis, this lighter pink area is the dermal layer of skin. You should know that it's made up of a connective tissue, dense, irregular connective tissue. It has lots of collagen fibers and some elastic fibers to give it resiliency. Underneath the dermis, we have the hypodermis, or subcutaneous tissue. And this is made up mostly of adipose tissue. There's also areolar tissue in here, but you can't really visualize it in this image. So this is hypodermis, which is adipose tissue. This is the dermis, which is dense, irregular connective tissue. And this is the epidermis. And in terms of tissue types, this one is stratified squamous epithelium. Let's move to a close-up of the epidermis, and we'll talk about the five layers of the epidermis that we see with thick skin. The bottommost layer down here that kind of curls through the image is called the basal layer. The basal layer is where cells are dividing, the skin stem cells are dividing and giving rise to more skin cells which contribute to this epidermis. Once the cells are produced they move up through these other layers that we'll discuss and ultimately leave off of the top layer. We lose cells off of the surface of our skin all day long. So anyway, that's the stratum basal down here. The stratum spinosum is the next layer and most of the living cells of skin are in this layer. So this is stratum spinosum. Stratum granulosum is next, it's here, and you can see that these cells look more granular in appearance. Above the stratum granulosum we have stratum lucidum. This is a more translucent layer. And then above the stratum lucidum we have the stratum corneum a thick layer of dead, keratinized, flattened cells. It makes up a very tough outer part of the skin. So those are the layers of the epidermis. As long as we're on epidermis, let me show you some other structures that you can see in this image. This is a Meissner's corpuscle or a tactile corpuscle. It is used to detect touch on the surface of our skin and in the thick skin of your fingertips especially, there are lots of these Meissner's corpuscles. In this image you can also see pigmentation. The darker area here is produced by melanin and this cell here may be a melanocyte that's making those pigment granules. I'm not positive though. But there's certainly a melanocyte in the neighborhood when you see this pigmentation. I think that's about all we can see in this higher magnification. Let's go back down here. We'll move away from the epidermis and go to the dermal layer of the skin. So this is the dermis and again it's dense irregular connective tissue. Lots and lots of collagen fibers here but also some elastic fibers to give it resiliency. Um, structures that are thought to be in the epidermis, um, sweat glands which you can see one of them here. This is a sweat gland. This is an eccrine sweat gland, also known as, a, known as a merocrine sweat gland. This is another sweat gland here. And there's another eccrine sweat gland or merocrine sweat gland here. Now in the textbook these, are, these sweat glands are said to have their home in the dermal layer, but you can see on this image that most of these sweat glands are actually seen, at least in this individual section, they're seen in the hypodermis. This is hypodermis once again. It's made up mostly of adipose tissue. There is also areolar tissue here, but you can't visualize it in this image. So I think that's pretty much everything that we can see on thick skin. Thank you once again for watching, and as always, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact me. Thanks for watching.